Across the UK, there are a reported 30 million gardeners. If everyone were to plant just one tree and let it grow, they would store the same amount of carbon as is produced by driving 284 billion miles, that's 11 million times around the planet. Furthermore, if every gardener produced 190 kilograms of compost each year, they would save the amount of carbon produced by heating half a million homes for a year. And this is just the UK. Consider if every garden in the world had this attitude. As governments and businesses strive to reduce emissions, natural landscapes such as forests, wetlands, and mangroves are gaining attention for their ability to guard against climate change hazards. According to horticulturists, the basic garden can also be a potent weapon in this fight. So what are the ways that you and I can turn our gardens or outdoor spaces into carbon capture mini miracles? Well follow these three easy steps and your garden will both be more eco-friendly and more beautiful. Step 1. Wild Lawns In the past, everyone wanted a pristine lawn, but now there's a big movement in gardening for more natural landscapes, which is on the right lines for the cause. Lawns, according to environmentalists, may become thriving animal hubs if left alone. Given that lawns represent an estimated 23% of urban territory, they have a lot of potential to assist in combating the global biodiversity crisis. Keeping the lawn mower in the shed is also good for the environment. Reduced energy usage from lawn mowers and sprinklers is one of the most essential things gardeners can do in the near term. Step 2. Trapping Carbon in the Ground Soil's phenomenal ability to transform our gardens into biodiverse havens that can aid in climate change mitigation. There is a lot more going on underneath than there is above ground. We need good soil for food production and for carbon sequestration. According to a 2020 study, replenishing and restoring the world's soils, both in farmed and natural landscapes, might help remove up to 5.5 billion tons of CO2 each year. That is the same amount of annual greenhouse gas emissions as the United States, the world's second largest polluter, will emit in 2020. Carbon from dead plant matter is absorbed by healthy soil, which reduces emissions. Soil needs a healthy balance of water, air spaces, living creatures like fungi, and nutrients to store in as much carbon as possible. Gardeners maintain this equilibrium by adding organic material to their soil on a regular basis. When the soil is damp, gardeners should avoid compacting it by pressing it down too hard or using heavy equipment, since this can close crucial air pockets and prevent water from draining. Soil will decay and carbon reserves will dwindle if it is left naked and exposed to the elements. To prevent CO2 from escaping into the atmosphere, cover the bare soil with plants like clover and also mulch with loose coatings of biodegradable materials. Fallen leaves and broken twigs don't need to be removed from flower beds but can be treated as living mulches, which contribute vital nutrients. Gardeners can also use these so-called living mulches to lessen their dependence on nitrogen fertilizers, which have a large carbon footprint. Adding homemade compost to your soil is a simple method to enhance it. A healthy compost should have a 50-50 mix of nitrogen-rich materials like grass clippings and vegetable peels, as well as carbon-rich materials like woody branches and paper towels. Composting also allows you to discard any leftover food in a sustainable way. When dumped into landfill without oxygen, food waste rots and releases methane. Step 3. Plants while some gardeners like a consistent look for their flower beds and lawns, growing a diverse range of plants is advantageous if you want to turn your garden into a carbon sink. Plant diversity has been found to boost production and carbon sequestration in the soil. More plant diversity enhances carbon sequestration by making the best use of available space in a garden, both above and below ground. Layer plants and vegetables with roots that reach different depths are also vital to have in your garden so that they can enter all parts of the soil and disperse nutrients throughout. The RHS recommends, if possible, planting a mix of drought-tolerant trees, such as snow gum and home oak, and ones that can withstand waterlogging, such as red maple and golden willow. However, trees aren't the only plants that might help your yard reduce its carbon footprint. 
Native grasses have deep root systems that reach more than two feet into the earth, acting as carbon reservoirs that release carbon into the soil as the roots die and disintegrate. Woody shrubs like spindle and sweetbriar, as well as herbs like rosemary and thyme, can assist increase the carbon reserves in your garden. If you want to brighten up your landscape with colorful plants, avoid annual flowers that need to be pulled up every year, releasing trapped carbon in the process, and instead choose sturdy perennials like peonies and sunflowers. Ponds may also play a role in gardeners' efforts to combat climate change. Small lowland ponds in northeast England were shown to store substantially more carbon than surrounding woods or grassland in one study. Not all ponds, however, serve as carbon sinks. A study conducted in the United States discovered that man-made ponds in Florida that collect stormwater runoff emit more carbon than they store in their mucky sediment. That discovery suggests that some ponds are doing us an ecosystem's disservice, ponds can also emit significant volumes of methane into the atmosphere. Ponds less than 1 square meter are responsible for around 40% of all methane emissions from inland waters. However, not all environmental benefits are about carbon, and ponds come with many other advantages, such as boosting biodiversity. In fact, some charities say that adding a pond to your garden is one of the best things you can do for wildlife. If you disrupt the sludge at the pond's bottom, your pond will emit more methane than it can absorb. To keep the nasty gas contained, they recommend removing dead vegetation from the surface of your pond as rotting trash will emit methane and netting it in the autumn. Gardeners that use low-carbon strategies will be rewarded with robust biodiversity and lush plant boundaries. So there you have it, three essay and rewarding ways to make your garden not only more eco-friendly but also more diverse and beautiful. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video.